One of the most important things to learn when using any kind of programming language is functions. They're like short snippets of code that you can just call upon whenever you need them, so you don't have to write out the entire thing, you just write the one line, that's the function. So for keyboard functions, I've got an object here that's just a circle, and inside, I've got a whole bunch of different functions that the keyboard can use. In this little script I've set up, this one shows all different kinds of keyboard checks. So I've got keyboard check on its own, and it says returns whether the key, the given key on the keyboard is currently held down. So this is you holding the key down. And it's written like this. Keyboard check, and then the key you want inside the parentheses. Now I've thrown this inside an if statement so that if I'm holding it down something happens. And for this I'm just taking the x position of this object and increasing its value by 4. So it'll move to the right because I'm holding right. Same thing down here. This is for pressed. Returns whether the given key on the keyboard has just been pressed. Now there's another one for just been released. And to understand that, here's an image to help you. When GameMaker checks whether a key is held, pressed, or released, or really any kind of button, could be your mouse, could be a touch screen, it checks the previous step and the current step, and then it compares the two. For keyboard check, which is held down, if on the previous check the key was held down, and on this check the keyboard is held down, then we know that the keyboard key is held down. For pressed, it wants to know if it was up before, which is not being held, and now it's down. Then it will trigger that one time, meaning the key was just pressed. And then it's the reverse for released. Was the key held down last step, and now on this step, is it released? And if so, we'll run this code. So I'll put that away, and we come back, we can see what we're going to do when we press the left key is decrease our x value by 12, so we're going to move to the left by 12, but only when I press the key down. So it'll only happen once. I'll have to release the key and press it again for this to happen again. And likewise, when I press the space bar, I'll move to the right by 4, similar to the right key, but I'll only do it when the space bar is released. So I have to keep pressing and releasing for this to happen. Now these just check the key codes, which you don't have to know, but these constants are actually looking up the key codes and telling your computer how to do these things. You can actually check the hardware of the keyboard directly, and that's down here with keyboard check direct. This returns whether the key with the particular key code is pressed by checking the hardware directly. You don't always have to use this, but it is necessary if you want to split up left and right function keys. For instance, Control, Alt, and Shift. Since they're both on the left and right side of your keyboard, if you just wrote VK Control or VK Alt, either the left or right side could be pressed and, and then it doesn't matter. But if you check your keyboard directly, you can check whether it's the left control key or right control key that's being held. And that's what I've done here. If keyboard check direct VK, which is virtual key, left control, then my X position will decrease by 24 pixels every step. So what I'm going to do is show you what this looks like in action. So here's our object, and to help us out, I've written which key is being held down just above our object. So if you remember, if I hold down the right key, I should move consistently to the right by 4 pixels. And that's what's happening. Now if I press left, only the moment I press down on left, I'll move 12 pixels to the left, so watch. See, I'm holding it down, but nothing's happening. I have to release the key and press it again. Like so. Now the space bar is the same sort of thing, but it's only when it's released. So I can press down the space bar and hold it. See, it's being held. But it's only when I release it will I move to the right. So to set up for this left control, since it's going to move by 24 pixels, which is a lot, you'll see if I hold down the left control key, there I go. <laughs> I move really fast to the left because I'm moving at 24 pixels. So that's how your keyboard inputs work. And you can put these together to create your basic controls for any kind of two-dimensional game, even three-dimensional game. The most important thing to understand is, what are these returning? 
functions usually return a value. They don't have to, but they usually do. And in this case, these ones do. And they're just checking, I believe, let's middle click on a function. That's a really good thing to understand. If you middle click a function, the GameMaker documentation will open up. So we've got keyboard check, it's returning a boolean. A boolean is a true or false, so really it's just checking, is it held down? Yes, no, true, false, that's it. It's all it's checking and returning. But what's cool about that, and what's important to understand, is that true equals the number one and false equals the number zero. And if you understand that, you can use those numbers to your advantage. So what I'm saying here is if keyboard check VK right, so what I'm just saying is if it equals one, I could say that, like, if it equals one, that's true, then do what we're going to do. Or I could say if I'm not doing it, if it's false, then this is true. Or, more correctly, this will be executed. So understanding those numbers, you can use them in mathematical equations later. It's a little more advanced, and we'll get into that some other time. But for now, it's good to just understand that these are going to return a value, and when the values are returned, true or false, something will happen. So you can set up all your player movements like this. You can say, if keyboard check to the right, well, my character moves to the right, and the left, and the up, and the down, they're all there. It's actually important, too, to check your variables. These are built-in constants. If I check those, we can see in the documentation that there are a whole heck of a lot of keys you can check. You can check all the different keys here. We can check these left and right, which I was talking about that you have to use keyboard check direct for. And of course, if you're checking strings and stuff, you can check characters like letters and numbers and whatever. But let's move on to the next thing. Now, this is keyboard key instead of check. This is the computer simulating the press of a key, which is kind of interesting. So here I have keyboard check pressed, simulates the press and hold of a given key. That's important to understand that it's like the computer is pressing down the key like an idiot. And he's not going to release it until you tell him to release it. So even though it says keyboard check pressed VK up, so if I press the up key, it'll say, okay, then the computer will press the right key. See that? I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's a little weird. Once I press up, the computer will press right. It's like another player is here and he's pressing the right key. And then he just leaves his idiot fat finger on the right arrow key. See, I've released up. There's no key. There's, I'm not pressing anything. But he leaves his fat finger on there and it just keeps moving to the right until I, myself, press the right key and release it to simulate the release. I can also program that myself using keyboard key release. But in this case, we're going to use space. So if I release backspace, it's as if I released space. Now, if you remember, the space key moves my character to the right, just like VK right. See how it does that? But now if I do backspace, same thing. Every time I release backspace, it moves as if I'm pressing space. Now there are a few more keyboard checks I want to show here. This one's called keyboard clear. This function will clear the state of the given key. So we're going to say, if my exposition is greater than 400 in the room, so that's a lot over to the right, because zero is on the left side of the screen. It'll just clear the keyboard key. This variable stores whichever key is currently being used. So I should be able to show this with the right key. See how it's like stuttering? I don't know if you can see that. Once it gets past 400, it's trying to clear the key. Now, of course, it's clearing it, and then it's checking it again, and I'm pressing it, and it's clearing, and it's checking, and it's clearing, and it's checking. Um, it would have been better if I threw this into an alarm and just said, hey, after a second, you know, move to the right, and then clear that key. Here we have IO clear, though. So if I were to press escape, this will clear all of my inputs and outputs. This is everything. This is, this is the mouse. This is the keyboard. This is everything that I can, I can use for in and out. I believe maybe just mouse and keys. So if I'm holding down left, okay, so we know that left only operates if I press it. So I'm holding it, nothing's happening, that's fine. But if I press escape, 
See that? No key. I cleared it away. It's like the computer's just like, forget it. I don't, I don't want to think about that anymore. Now, what's interesting, I believe, if I hold down space... Now, if you remember, if I release space, I move. So let's hold down space. We'll press escape. We've now cleared the space bar from its memory. It doesn't know I'm holding it down anymore. But if I release it, I still move. Because it still triggers the release event, even though it doesn't know I'm holding it down. So, yes, what you have to understand is, although it is clearing these keyboard and mouse states... Same here, it clear, this clears a very specific key. Like, I could just write in, like, VK right, and it'll clear VK right whenever I'm to the right. This clears it, so it can't be referenced from these variables. But you are still physically pressing it. This next section is for keyboard mapping. This is so you can make one key act like another key. It's good if you want to put some sort of customization for your keys in your game. So how this one works, this maps one key on the keyboard to another. This is keyboard set map. So the first key is the key you want to map onto, and the second one is what you want it to adopt from. So what I'm saying here is the A key, this, this is a little function called ORD for ordinary, this is just to pick up the string, some ordinary uh, character, some letter on your keyboard. So I'm saying the letter A, this ordinary key, I want to map anytime I press VK left, that's, that's the left arrow key, anytime I press that, anytime I press A, act as if I had been pressing the left arrow key. So now, A and left do the exact same thing. All I have to do is use VK left in all of my code, and just because I put this in one spot, the letter A acts as if it's left. I never have to code anything else, just this one line. Okay, so A is mapped to 37. That's the key code for left arrow key. So if I were to press A, see, I'm pressing A, but it's telling me I'm pressing left arrow. Because A is now mapped to the left arrow key. Anything I do with A will act as if I'm pressing the left arrow key. So that's very useful. You could do that for WASD. You could code only for the VK arrow keys, up, down, left, and right, and then just say keyboard set map, W, you know, S, A, D, and it'll map on top of that, and you're totally fine. Now, keyboard get map is just getting the value instead of setting it. So gets the currently mapped ASCII code for the selected key. I'm putting it in a variable called map key, and the function is keyboard get map. So I'm just checking, hey, uh, remember how I mapped the A key to left? Yeah, can you tell me what I've mapped it to and store it in this variable? Now you may have noticed when I was in the room last time, it said A is mapped to 37. That's what this is right here. This is now 37. And the reason for that is because VK left is ASCII code 37 and it's being imposed, mapped on top of A. So when I ask, hey, get the map for A, it's telling me it's left. So that's good to throw into your code. You can use it to like check things if you need to, or to print out, like I did, draw it out onto the screen for the players that are customizing their controls. They can see, oh, I've mapped A to left. Okay, I get it. If you want to get rid of all your maps, you just use keyboard unset map. This will reset the keyboard mapping to its default state. So it'll go right back to a regular keyboard. Now I've commented that out because if I left it in, it would just constantly happen and then it would negate this code because I keep unsetting the map I just set. So you just have to call that anytime. We can put it like, you know, uh, let's use our newfound keyboard check. So let's say I'm going to check if I've pressed a key. So now this is only in a conditional statement. It won't happen all the time, only if this condition is met. And keyboard check press, um, let's just say VK down for some reason. Okay, so the down arrow key. If I press down on the arrow key, then my map will be unset. So the last thing here I want to show you is kind of quirky. It's just the numlock key. This only works for a Windows keyboard, because most other things don't have numlock. And there are two functions. There's keyboard get numlock, which just 
returns one or zero. True or false? Is numlock on? Is numlock off? The other is setting it. So I can set it to false if I really want to. It's nothing really special. If for some reason numlock is an integral part of your game, you can just code that in if you want to set it on or off. Like when your game starts up, make sure it's on or make sure it's off. So here it says, is numlock set? Well, one, it's true. Yes, it is set. Now if I press my numlock key, there we go. My numlock is off on my keyboard and in my game it says zero, it's off. So it just detects whether it's on or off. Nothing special. Now the last little thing I want to show you is just a few variables that I haven't covered yet about the keyboard. It's keyboard last character. That just stores the last character press. Characters are like numbers and letters. There's keyboard last key. That's all the keys on the keyboard. So that'll re return the ASCII code. And keyboard string. This will hold up to 1024 characters that you last pressed. So I'm storing each one in a variable. And then I'm going to print it to the screen so we can see what it's like. These are actually really useful if you need to get a username. Like they can type in their name and we can store that. So right now last character is null. There's nothing there. We haven't pressed a character yet. The last key is zero because I haven't pressed anything. We're on no key. And we haven't typed anything to create a string. So let's press a key first. There we go. I press left. So we know that ASCII code is 37. So if we press up, we got all kinds of things happening there. So that will store the last key you pressed. And you can do stuff with that if you want. But if we want to look at characters, like I'm holding shift. That's 160 by the way. Capital T. So the last character I pressed was capital T, and it's in the string. Now I can continue typing if I want. Spacebar counts too. So you can see how last character only stores the very last character used. Last key stores only the very last key used. But last string can actually hold up to 1,024 characters. So I was able to type out the game name. Like I said, that's actually really useful if a character, that's actually really useful if a player needs to put his his username in or a password or type anything, really. I mean, there are a lot of games based on typing. You can make a whole text game in here, not even use graphics. So the most important part is pressing F1 when you're in Game Maker and opening up that Game Maker documentation. And an index is like everything you're ever going to need all functions all categories all ever so if i typed in keyboard here's all my keyboard stuff that we just learned keyboard check all about it what it looks like the type it returns like if it's a real number or if it's a string which is a bunch of letters or if it's a boolean true or false whatever it returns and then they give you a little example most powerful tool in all of game maker Thank you.